everyone! Today I'm filming a highly requested video, and like the title suggests, it's a beading tutorial. I'll be showing you how to create this beading pattern which I used to trim the neckline and sleeves of an 1890s dress. It's relatively simple to do once you get the hang of it and it adds a lot of detail and visual interest to any project. I'm calling it a wrapped pearl pattern because the process consists of wrapping seed beads around pearls to create this twisted design. If you like how it looks and want to learn how to do it, then keep on watching. For this pattern, I'm using three different types of beads. The first are 6mm off-white glass pearls. I'm also using two different types of glass seed beads. The first are an opaque cream color with a shiny satin finish, and the others are grey, matte, and slightly translucent. Both of these are size 12. I bought my pearls from an Etsy shop that I will link below, and the seed beads are from Beads World in New York City. But similar items can be purchased from any craft store. You will also need scissors and a very small needle. I'll be using an embroidery needle in size 10. I would highly recommend these as they are the only ones I've found that actually fit through most of the beads I own without getting stuck. And lastly, you'll need thread. I'll be using Guterman polyester thread since I'm not using very heavy beads and the garment I'm beading will be treated gently. If you're worried about the durability of your beading and the thread breaking, then you can use thread intended for jewelry making. These tend to feel like fishing line and are much stronger. If you can't find that, you can look for heavy duty threads used in upholstery. These are stronger than regular thread, but are also thicker, so they don't work well with very small beads. The sample I made today is meant to imitate the 1890s dress I originally used this beading design on. It's made from a layer of polyester taffeta that is faced with wool flannel. If you're working on a thin material, I'd highly suggest backing it with a thicker material. It makes the beading sit better and you don't have to worry as much about the fabric puckering. And with that said, let's get started. Thread the needle with a length of thread that is about 30 inches long, then knot one end of the thread. You can do this by wrapping the thread around your index finger, then using your thumb to roll the thread off your finger. Using both your thumb and your index finger, pull tightly on the twisted thread until it forms a knot. Poke the needle through the point of your fabric where you want the beading to begin. Then bring the needle to the wrong side of the fabric at that point. Make a small stitch through the facing fabric to create a loop. Then bring the needle through the loop and pull tightly to create a knot. Do this several times until the thread is secured, then bring the needle to the front side of the fabric. Pick up a seed bead, then a purl, then another seed bead. Pull the beads down the thread until they sit against the fabric. Secure them in place by bringing the needle through both layers of fabric. Then bring the needle back up through the material about a tenth of an inch away. Pull the thread tightly so the beads sit where you want them to be, but don't pull too tightly or you'll risk puckering the material. Then repeat this process all the way across the material you want to bead. Do your best to keep all the beads spaced evenly and if you're stitching them against the edge of a collar or cuff, try to keep them parallel to that edge. The exact spacing of these things is up to you, you just want it to look relatively even. Once you're finished or running low on thread, bring the needle to the underside of the fabric and tie the thread off with your preferred type of knot. I'm using the type I showed in the beginning of this video, but you can backstitch or do a tailor's knot instead, as long as it's secure. Now I'll be using the grey matte seed beads. For this part of the pattern, bring the needle through the fabric a tenth of an inch away from the final purl. Then pick up a dozen or so seed beads and pull them down the thread until they sit against the fabric. You want these beads to create an arch over top of the purl. If you don't have enough, pick up a few more. Once you have an arch of beads that extends to the space you left between each purl, pull the needle through both layers of fabric and pull the thread tightly. Bring the needle through the material underneath the arch of the beads at the center of one of the purls. Then bring the needle down just over top of the arch. This secures the strand of beads in place so it can't fluff around. Bring the needle back up between the strand about two beads away from the end. Pull the needle through the final two beads, then continue by picking up another dozen seed beads. This will make the strand of beads look continuous, but it will be far more durable than tacking a long strand of beads into a similar pattern. And in case it isn't clear, we are beading in an over-under pattern. Once you're finished, tie off the thread so it's secure, then clip it. Rethread your needle and tie off the end. 
Bring the needle through the fabric just beneath the seed beads you've already stitched in place. Then continue with the same process. Go through a dozen or so seed beads, pull them down the thread so they sit against the fabric, and make sure you have enough to create an arch. Then bring the needle through both layers of fabric to secure the beads in place. Bring the needle back up underneath the middle of the strand, then bring it back down over top of the strand and pull the thread tightly. This secures the strand in place. Bring the needle back up near the end of the strand and stitch through the final two beads in that strand. Then continue on! As you do this, the beads will start to create a woven effect where it looks like they're twisting around the pearls. Once you reach the end, tie the thread off. Now starting from one end, I'll be adding ivory seed beads that extend out from the points where the grey seed beads meet. I pick up two using my needle, then secure them by going through both layers of fabric. The needle should come back up at the next point where the strands of grey beads meet. And that's it! This is the finished beading pattern. If you would like to see more beading tutorials, then please let me know and I'll do my best to make more in the future. If you'd like to see more of my work or tutorials I posted in the past, then check out the description box, I will have them linked there. That's it for this video, thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful, and I hope you have a really awesome day.